All right, hello guys. Um, so I'll be showing you the fish hunting mini game I made. So let's start. So you can go over here and jump and just keep jumping and we can see the fish pond over there and jump over. So now when the player got close to it, Something gonna happen. It's not done yet. So we have four fish, four type of fish that we need to find. Now look, those uh, you see those fish are out of the pound and. They are lost in the in this world, and we gotta find them. Um, and to interact with them, there's like different in interaction we can do with each fish. But okay, after the, the fish are out of the pound, you'll be seeing footprint um, arrow on the ground to indicate the direction to find the fish. And also, each fish has a, a color assigned to it, and you can see on the footprint. This is a white color arrow, which is indicating that it's pointing to dolphin. And you can probably guess what what is a red arrow pointing to a shark? Cause cause why? You know why? It's dangerous. <laughs> and over here we have. A yellow arrow which is pointing to the clownfish the small little one and over here we have a blue arrow pointing to the seahorse um follow the yellow arrow because there's another thing i want to show um okay we have another one over here another one over here but why is it pointing to the black void over there. Why is that? So when you look up, there is a sad face. Um, it's kind of I'm using this kind of as, as a way to guide the player to see the the rock face I made. You can only see this a sad face over there in that spot. But what's cool about this is that not only you can see the sad face from that angle, but if you go over, I did not make that. Sorry. Let's uh okay. We're gonna take a quick uh, shortcut to um. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, take a shortcut to get back up. Well, so eventually you can uh jump up here. From this angle, you can see a happy face, and it has a tongue sticking out and you can actually just go all the way there and jump over to the the town i i made this swimming pond um well not swimming pond the fish pond <laughs> you can't really swim in there i have um a template for the animation to how the animation works so this is the one um, it's quite, it's very complicated. Well, there's a lot of things in here because um, I want to have like different uh, option for the player to, if they want to have like one and two collision box or if they only want to have one collision box and or if they want to trigger the animation by pressing E when you're, when you're within the collision box or you can do it by simply touching the collision box without pressing any buttons so this is uh, where so we have okay we have two collision box this is for the first one this is for the second one 
So for the first one right here, when you overlap with the collision box, there's the option to choose if you want to trigger simply by the collision. If so, then we do not need the print string. If so, then create the sequence for the animation and add the blinding, play the animation, destroy the collision box. I know this works, so we don't need the print string anymore. And if you want to trigger by pressing E key, which is the enter app button I sign, then it's going to go down this path or enable input so you can press E to interact or create an interact screen, UI, add to viewport, press E to interact. So, um, would you interact with the object for the first time? The uh, variable is not valid. It's not existing in this world yet. And then it's going to go down to spots. There's an option to check if you want the collision to be only one. Only keep the collision box one. If you want, if, if so, then create animation, um, sequence and add blinding play, play the game. And then it's going to check if you want to play the animation once. If so, then just destroy the collision box. On the other pass, when you have two collision box, change the first collision box to be no collision. So you can interact with it and change the other collision box to be interact interactive. And then the others are basically the same play the animation and check this if it's check this again and the next time you interact with the object is valid the variable is valid then over here check if the collision is single or not if it's true then just play it and play reverse this is the reversing the animation if it's false if we have two collision box to switch between, then we basically just switching back and forth. And the rest are just the same. The animation you see on the fish pond is the, the fish family here. I can just uh, open, open one up, just give you an example uh, what it looks like. So let's make this bigger. You can see how, how it goes. So I have a, a fish family child blueprint of that template. So at the start, we to add a, add a binding. Also on the right here for the variable, you can assign if play the animation once, put the right animation here. Oh, this is actually using a, another template I made um, for for this child blueprint. It's not it's not the one I show you. It's uh, interact with collision. That's another template, which is a um, which pretty much, pretty much the same thing. How um, like those uh, those footprint you seeing on the ground? Where at the start of the game you won't see it. It only shows up when you interact with the pound, with the fish pond. So to do that, what I did is in the sequence footprint, open it up. So what, what, what happened is that this event is a trigger I put in the sequence sequencer right here. At the very end, when the animation goes to a stop, then trigger this event, which is this right here. So at first we destroy the actors. So those fish are gone. Those um, fish out of, jumping out of the pond are gone. And then 
get all actual class of those arrow footprint to make those um, to make them visible using for loop for each loop and what's gonna do next is making the 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 fish at the at the end when the player finds it to be visible also the collision changing the collision type um also the collision bar make it interact interactive both is that a word for it just make it interactive now with this template if you want to animate any um, things like a tree or something anything you can just uh, you know create a child blueprint of the template and then change um, change some value um and then you are good to go. It took, took me a lot of testing and time to figure out the way to make it works. Okay, another thing I forgot to show is the footprint arrow markers on the ground. Those are, those are attached um, of what I got online. And first of, first of all, I'm, I made it as a materials This is the the parent, and those these are the, the childs of it. Okay, how I how I did it is the textures opacity is connected, and then we just change the color here. So after I have the material, I made a blueprint for it. They also have a, a parent and, ch and four childs. This one is a parent. This the others are childs. Um, so we basically set the visibility at the star to be hidden. And have the sphere collision. So when the arrow is can be shown then set a vis visibility back on when you're overlapping with it when you leave it then set a visibility off and we're using um decal to show the arrows for this one it, this is the parent blueprint the parent blueprint for the other ones, we basically just change the, just assign a different color to it. Like the clownfish here. Assign the, the yellow material to it. Yeah, that's basically it. Take care. Um, I'll see you next time.